Hey, what's going on world? I have made it to Volgograd, one of the most recognizable Russian cities. This video will be about this city. I moved here from warm lands of Krasnodar region near Black Sea and I returned to winter. Now is the very end of January, the temperature is approximately minus 5, minus 6 Celsius. Volgograd is a very interesting city with numerous landmarks and places of interest that I'm going to explore. I'm staying on the railway platform, which means that I got here to this point by electric train. And electric train is sort of the subway for Volgograd because this is one of the most stretched Russian cities. To get from here from this point where I'm staying to the city center to downtown you will need approximately an hour this is one of the longest Russian cities and therefore electric trains play a role of subway here I started exploring the city in the southernmost district of Volgograd called Krasnarmeyski before the beginning of the Great Patriotic War this area was populated by Volga Deutsche or Volga Germans who were invited to live in Russian Empire by Empress Catherine II back in the 1760s when Nazi Germany invaded USSR, the Volga Germans and a number of other national minorities of southern Russia were deported to Siberia and Central Asia on suspicion of propensity for collaboration activities. The toponymic of the district is also full of history, like now we are staying on the avenue of the heroes of Stalingrad, and the whole avenue is named in honor of them. There is no doubt that the Battle of Stalingrad was the most significant episode of the history of Volgograd. The Battle of Stalingrad was a major confrontation during World War II, fought between the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany from July 17, 1942 to February 2, 1943. The battle was a turning point in the war and one of the largest and bloodiest battles in history. The battle turned in favor of the Soviets when they encircled the German Sixth Army, cutting off their supply lines. The trapped German forces faced starvation and harsh weather conditions, leading to massive casualties. In February 1943, General Paulus surrendered, marking a significant defeat for Nazi Germany and a turning point in the Eastern Front. The Battle of Stalingrad is often considered a symbol of Soviet resilience and the beginning of the Soviet Union's offensive against the German forces. Due to the fact that this district became its development in Soviet period, the architecture here is also mainly Soviet, but the architecture is not of Stalin time here. It's a little bit later, I believe that these houses were constructed during Khrushchev, so some typical Khrushchevkas can be found here in Krasnarmeyski district of Volgograd. This is morning rush hour and therefore we can see even crowds of people on the streets. Some babushkas preparing their stuff to be sold. I have found some epic icicles as the ones in Vorkuta. Last years, more and more street art appeared, not even in the most presentable districts of Russian cities. And there are some heroes of Russian cartoons that were popular both in USSR and in current Russia, from Nupagadi, from Winnie Pooh, Karlsson, and Prostokvashina, and also a cat Leopold. Right now we are staying in front of the lock number one of Volgadon ship canal this is the gateway and here is the official beginning of the canal the krasnarmeyski district is divided by volgadon canal which connects two main water arteries of southern russia volga and don the canal is rightfully considered one of the great construction projects of communism more than a million people took part in its construction Thanks to this canal, built in 1952, during the reign of Joseph Stalin, access from the Caspian Sea to the waters of the world's ocean became possible. In the Krasnarmeyski district of Volgograd, there is lock number one of the Volgadon Canal, remarkable by its 40-meter-high entrance arch. The New Year Eve, right in the center of the alley, and I'm saying New Year, not Christmas, because Christmas is not as widely celebrated in Russia as in Europe and in some Western countries. New Year is the main, the main event that is awaited by most of people here. And even in the late January, the tree is still standing here. At the entrance to the Volgadon Canal, next to Volga River, there is the world's largest monument to Vladimir Lenin, opened in 1973. Its total height is 57 meters. 
It is noteworthy that in the first 10 years after the opening of the Volgadon Canal, there was a statue of Stalin but not Lenin. However, during the Stalinization that began in the 60s, the monument to the Stalin was dismantled. For several years, the pedestal of the monument was empty until the construction of a new monument to the leader of the Russian Revolution. Another peculiar attraction of the southern neighborhoods of Volgograd is a cafe in the shape of an aircraft, located near the arch of the shipping canal. In the past, this actual aircraft, class Yak-40, belonged to Airflot Airlines. A rarely discussed but exceptionally interesting place in Volgograd is so-called German Corner. One of the most meaningful attractions of southern Volgograd is the Museum of Sarepta, located on the site of Saxon missionaries who resettled to Russia in the late 18th century following the manifesto issued by the Catherine II. The Saxon colony of Sarepta was located south of the modern-day center of Volgograd that was formerly called Tsaritsyn. The German colony was known for being one of the most developed part of the region. Colonists constructed infrastructure facilities and industries that had not previously existed in Lower Volga. For example, the first mustard and oil pressing plant in Russia was built here. In addition, Sarepta was known for scientists working there. Scientists from Sarepta achieved success in the field of medicine, chemistry, physics, industrial production and the development of new varieties of cultivated plants. Over its more than 200-year history, Sarepta was able to turn into a prosperous town and then became part of the city of Volgograd. Nowadays, Sarepta continues to exist as a museum. All right. Krasnoarmeyski district is explored and now we are going to the central part of the city by this wonderful electric train. You know, there are a lot of interesting examples of Soviet architecture in Russia and Volgograd in terms of it is one of the greatest collector of such examples and now I'm walking along the Palace of Sport that was constructed here in Soviet Union and has such an interesting architecture. This palace is not operating at the moment. It's closed completely, but I believe inside there are a lot of things to explore that reminds us of Soviet era. Right now we are staying in front of the most significant and the most recognizable monument to the Second World War, to the victims of the Second World War, which is called Mamayev Kurgan. Such a massive staircase is the actual beginning of the way to the monument to Mamayev Kurgan. On the staircase you can read for our Soviet homeland USSR. Before this massive staircase that leads to the monument is this sort of wall with the names of cities that are actually hero cities. Basically the cities where the most harsh crazy battles of the Second World War took place, Odessa, Minsk, Kiev, etc. And I can see that there are some fresh roses in front of the box of Leningrad or St. Petersburg. Here are two walls on both sides of the staircase with some sculptures of the soldiers and their sayings. Some famous quotations of the dictators of just people about the war. Mamayev Kurgan is a prominent hill and memorial complex in Volgograd. It gained historical significance due to its role in the Battle of Stalingrad during World War II. During the Battle of Stalingrad, Mamayev Kurgan was a key strategic location and changed hands several times. The hill provided a commanding view of the city and the Volga River, making it a critical position for both sides. The hill became a symbol of the fierce struggle and sacrifice during the battle. After the war, Mamayev Kurgan was transformed into a memorial complex dedicated to the memory of those who thought and died during the Battle of Stalingrad. The centerpiece of the complex is the towering statue of the Motherland Calls, which stands at the top of the hill and is one of the tallest statues in the world. The memorial also includes various sculptures, monuments and mass graves, serving as a reminder of the significance of the Battle of Stalingrad and the human cost of the conflict.
Near the statue, there is an internal fire, near which I happen to observe the changing of the guard. These are all names of people who died between 42nd and 43rd years. In whose honor this memorial cemetery was founded. It's just from one side and the same amount of names is on the other side. What's going on world? This is new day and I'm continuing exploring Volgograd. I'm staying in front of Krasnak Tabar steel factory. This is one of the largest metallurgy facilities in Russia. It was opened during Russian Empire in 1897 and still it is functioning. It was completely destroyed during Stalingrad battle of the Second World War and then restored. It provided steel for Volgograd tractor factory. It was awarded by the Order of Lenin. Here it is on the left. And some sort of the Order of Labor Glory must be in the middle. And also here you can see the Soviet emblem, the original one on the corner of the building. During the Second World War, Volgograd it used to be a strategic point for both Soviet army and to the army of the enemy because here were a lot of factories and plants. We are walking the district of Lower Barricade, Nizhny Barricade, where one of the military factories was located. And that was the purpose of enemy's army to conquer it, but Soviet army couldn't allow them to do it obviously and therefore they had to defend it somehow. And here is an interesting memorial which is also pretty significant. It is called Lutnikov Island. Barricade appears to be another Soviet district of Volgograd and the houses here are pretty noticeable because of such bay windows that create panoramic view. We have a golden opportunity to sneak into one of the Soviet buildings and check it inside the entrance hall. It has only two floors. Such a massive concrete staircase. Quite dilapidated. There is no glass, by the way. So this house is still inhabited. I do like this. Handrail, look at that. It's original, it's a wooden one. It's a wooden handrail. The memorial Ostrov Ludnikova or Ludnikov Island, the memorial to the military group, military division that was commanded by Colonel Ludnikov. They were surrounded by enemy's army here, and their task was to protect the Barricade factory, which is staying behind this Soviet building. They were defending it for 30 days and finally managed to win this battle. And my guess is that this monument is last visited at least because of its location, because to get here I had to walk at least half an hour via outskirts of Volgograd. This is not as famous as Mamayev Kurgan as Rodina might, but also pretty significant. Let's explore the ruins that remained after that battle. So this is the ruins of the common point, the main building of like battle headquarters of Russian army. It was completely destroyed by the bombs of Nazi army. That's the only stuff that is remained. It was not reconstructed intentionally. Another industrial monster of Volgograd is Volgograd tractor factory that was constructed in early 30s with the help of USA. This factory was at first constructed in USA, then it was disassembled, transferred here and constructed again here in Volgograd. This was one of the first factories that was built during the process of industrialization that was uh, started by Stalin, but unfortunately this factory doesn't work anymore. It was completely closed in 2020. Its gradual closure began right after the breakup of the USSR. And now only some military 
compartments are working here that produce stuff for military. This is the main entrance to it, which is now partly privatized but some small industries and companies. It probably was the administration, the head office of the factory, which is now occupied by private hospital or something. The abandonment of this place actually strikes the eyes. Some of the glasses, some of the windows just broken. But on the contrast, here is such incredible Soviet mosaic with the depicted tractors. Basically, the production of this factory. Just look at the scale of it. That's made it to Volgograd light rail system. We are now currently at Ploshet Lenina station. This is one of the several underground stations of Volgograd tram. These stations are designed for potential service of subway trains. The clearance, all the stuff here is suitable for subway trains. But due to the fact that Volgograd is a relatively small city, it has a little bit more than a million of people, of population, tram is pretty enough for it and therefore there is no subway trains and underground here you can meet trams it's high time to switch from unattractive outskirts factories and plants to the city center finally and observe guess whom mr lenin again so now we know that here is at least two monuments to lenin in volgograd but in fact, there is a lot of them. Nobody knows actually how many Lenins are in Russia or worldwide. There are thousands of monuments to him. And basically, that's it. That's the whole square. Nothing really special aside from the memorial or something behind it. Look at this kind of fresco with the image of a soldier of some war battle. Volgograd is washed by the waters of Volga River, the longest river in Europe. On the embankment of Volgograd there is a famous museum dedicated to the Battle of Stalingrad. The basis of the museum is a round-shaped building, which houses a panorama of the Battle of Stalingrad, as well as equipment, household items, documents, awards and other objects related to the Battle of Stalingrad. I walked around the outdoor exhibition of the museum, the main element of which was the Gerhard Mill, a mill building from the early 20th century, destroyed during the Battle of Stalingrad and not restored as a memory of the war. An equally significant exhibit was Pavlov's house, a four-story residential building in which a group of Soviet soldiers heroically held the defense for 58 days during the Battle of Stalingrad. You can also see military equipment in the museum, but it was not interesting to me, so I continued walking along the Volga embankment. The embankment gained its modern appearance in the post-war years. During the Battle of Stalingrad, soldiers of the 62nd Army delivered provisions from the left bank of the Volga and evacuated from the city the wounded and civilians. The soldiers of the 62nd Army also held the defense of the embankment and therefore it was named in honor of them. The location of the wartime river crossing is symbolically marked by the Propylia, the monumental gateway, between which there is a main staircase connecting several levels of the embankment. I discovered that a lot of birches on the embankment of Volgograd have a lot of signs on them. Get closer, we can even read something. We dub the there of the wartime. It's barely readable, but here we can see the names of a girl, of a boy, the plus between them. It's basically like a love message. After a walk along the Volga embankment, I went to see the Volgograd grain elevator, a rarely visited place with deep historical background. The Stalingrad elevator was the tallest building in the city, for which fierce fighting began on September 14, 1942. After eight days of defense and attempts to counterattack due to lack of food and ammunition, Soviet soldiers were forced to leave the elevator. New battles for the elevator broke out in January 1943. It became a stronghold for German units, which fired artillery and mortar fire at the troops of the USSR 64th Army advancing towards the city center. On January 24, Soviet units began military operations in the area of the elevator, and the next day they stormed it. 
As a result of the assault, which lasted three days, Soviet troops regained control of the elevator and captured dozens of German artillerymen. Nowadays the elevator continues to operate. Next to the elevator there is a monument to the marine soldiers, the defenders of the elevator. The main element of the monument is a 7-meter reinforced concrete statue of a marine soldier with an anti-tank rifle installed on a pedestal. There are at least two eternal flames in Volgograd. The one is located at Mamayev Kurgan and another one in the downtown of the city. I have found another masterpiece of architecture. This is the Palace of Culture of Labor Union. There is an incredible saying on top of that. Labor in USSR is the matter of honor, glory, value and heroism. And such incredible decorations. Look at that. And the last but not least place that I would like to visit in Volgograd is actually located outside Volgograd. This is the German Memorial Cemetery. To get there I had to take a bus to Volgograd Airport. Here it is, its main building. And from here I have to hitchhike approximately 15 kilometers to this memorial via a country road. After almost an hour of walking I have finally reached this military memorial. This memorial was created for the German victims of the Second World War by a special agreement between Russia and Germany. The memorial is split by the road on two parts and basically it seems that it's not really popular here because there are very few traces on the snow and the snow is not cleaned. The location of the memorial is also far from the best, it's quite distant from Volgograd. Like if you have a car it's okay, if you don't that would be a challenge to get here. This memorial was actually founded in the late 90s but new graveyard graves still appear here. Like this one is relatively new of 2010. The remains of people, of soldiers are still found gradually in the steppes, in the forest, in the swamps of Volgograd, Saratov and other regions that were attacked by the war. And their remains are being burned here on this cemetery. Not only here, but here as well. All of the gravestones in Soviet part have the helmets on top of them. The scariest things in these helmets are these bullet holes. Look here, for example, is the same hole, even two of them. By 2005, here had already been burned approximately 45,000. On the entrance to the memorial is the information about the fact that this memorial was constructed was founded on the territory of two villages that were completely destroyed during the war in 1942. The path from Soviet memorial crosses the road at this place and now we are entering the German part of the memorial. The path here is not cleaned but here it is. The German military cemetery. Here we can see Orthodox and Catholic crosses and this kind of sta table. It seems to be a table of negotiations. In front of this installation is a stone. I almost missed it due to severe snow drifts. So as we can read here this stone is laying on the foundation of the future chapel of peace as a sign of reconciliation between nations, as a memory of the war victims on 7th September of 2013. The same sign in German, but here is no actual foundation and absolutely zero signs of any kind of chapel. Well, it's a little bit more difficult to walk here because the path but it's still possible. Well, let me tell you that it has completely different forms of architecture in its design. German memorial. Look. Yeah, this is basically the structure of the memorial. The Soviet part is here. Volgograd is there. 
this is the road we are currently at this spot and here letter C is the field of graves and these rows of cubes is actually like the name cubes for those missing in German part we have approached the cubes the first row of cubes with the names of the victims and it seems that they literally named all of them here look like this is just one cube there are 29 cubes in one row and there are several rows so that's quite a lot And the last but not least attraction that must be noted is Volgograd main station. This is definitely one of the greatest examples of Soviet architecture, which still pleases the eyes of tourists and local citizens. I'm currently sitting in the waiting hall of Volgograd train station and just look at its interior. Such incredible this is not even the mosaic this is the painting on the on the sailing look it illustrates the bright communistic past or the presence or the future basically the idealistic picture on top of that sailing all right guys this is the last footage of this film about Volgograd thank you for watching this video hopefully you are subscribed to my channel and already hit the bell or be aware of new videos I tried I struggled I filmed so stay tuned see you later bye